Hi guys, it's BTP Joe here. No BTP Liam today, or not yet anyway. This is our first explore since the lockdown has been lifted, so we are travelling in separate cars today. But we're off to St Mary Who. So I'm going to drive over to Kent. We're going to keep within the two metre social distance. Hopefully it won't be too busy. And we're going to go and explore some historical sites out on the Kent marshes. So by fixing to get out. So it's going to be quite a good day. Um, the weather lately has been really nice. It's been um, really sunny, really warm. It's slightly overcast today. Um, we're not complaining though. It should be quite a good day out. So without further ado, let's hop in the car and let's go and check them out. Uh, Liam is travelling out in his Mini. I'm here in my KA and we should be meeting up in about, well, 40 minutes. So if you can see from my uh, dirty windscreen, Liam is uh, just pulling up. He's just... Uh, um, Found a little spot. There he is. I've been here for a while though. But uh, now Liam is here, shortly we'll head off. With of course the uh, lockdown haircut. I don't know who's got worse. I think I'd probably take that award. So the team had assembled on St Mary's Marsh in Kent, overlooking the Thames estuary where back in World War II, there would have been a huge jetty, or boom, cutting off the entire river from shipping. It would have been a kind of checkpoint. We checked out the concrete ruins that remain associated with the boom. So this little hut here was actually part of the communication control, I believe, for a boom or a jetty, which spanned across the entire River Thames. It went all the way to a place quite close to me and Joe's heart. It went all the way to Canvey Island. And unfortunately, all the traces of this area on Canvey at Scar's Elbow Battery, which was a defensive battery, have been demolished. Only about 20 years ago, um, there was still a lot of it left, but that was before we started exploring. Um, so unfortunately, we missed those bits. But look, here it is today. And you can see here someone's said some um, very wise, very grammatically correct words. All your base are belong to us. Brilliant. Poetry that. So if we just take a little look around it, Joe's inside having a look. The door's still on there, still with the paint. We've got some sort of windowsill, perhaps there used to be a window and this has been plastered over. Underneath this sort of um, concrete render, we've got this sort of white breeze block type material. So perhaps this was sort of not concrete solidly, but a kind of plastered lightweight material. Um, and it's not really all that much to it, but we've got this mast and look how high it goes. It's only made out of wood. And there's some kind of sign at the top. There used to be one of these masts on Canvey and it was there till very recently. And there was actually a sign on top saying something like telecommunications. It looked proper World War II old school um, but unfortunately that got knocked down as well which is a crying shame so i'm glad in kent in a more isolated location that the remains of this jetty still survive so let's go and take a look inside so here we are inside there isn't actually uh, that much to show at all the door is original, although it's got this uh, like metal cover on the outside, uh, behind it it's actually the original wooden door. This door as well, which would have lead, led through to the next room, pretty solid, um, although unfortunately it doesn't open, so we have no idea um, what's actually behind there. Um, otherwise, there isn't that much to say in here. The oldest graffiti so far that I've spotted is from Christmas Day 1980. Um, not too bad. No, obviously a lot uh, more recent stuff. And it shows how soft the walls are, in fact, that people have been able to carve into it quite so easily, which is unusual, because if this building was supposed to be some sort of defensive one, uh, you'd expect it to be perhaps a bit more solid.
Now I've just noticed something here about the rear of the building. You can actually see it looks like two separate buildings somehow connected together. Because you've got this one with this curb going around the bottom and then look you can see a big gap between them. And this one on the right seems to be one made out of the sort of breeze block type material that we're talking about. You can see all of that stuff in there. But then look, you can see the metal door just in the gap there. So this building here looks like it's made out of solid concrete. So perhaps this is the building that they were more worried about protecting. Or perhaps this was the original building and that was added later. Either way, I reckon whatever's in there is all the communications equipment. So on the other side of the river over there, you've got uh, Thurrocks, that's like Corriger, uh, Savile Hope, that sort of area. And this side of me, uh, got the edge of Corrigan at the start of Canvey. And it's over there where Scar's elbow would have been, which is where the jetty would have gone from this field behind us, across the Thames. So this huge jetty that ran out to Canvey, I think it was like a kind of wire chain linked, temporary sort of floating jetty type thing. And it had a gate in the middle that opened up to allow ships in and out. And it also had searchlights and light machine gun posts on the actual jetty in the middle of the tent itself and now there's no trace of that left whatsoever so joe's down here he's keeping very socially distanced at the moment <laughs> and we're going to check out these extra little bits down here we've got another hut we've got some sort of concrete post and we've got this nice little ditch which runs under a bridge a gate from world war ii and then over there we've got some kind of demolished buildings. Just to give you context, the hut we've looked at a minute ago is there, so it's some way down this track. You can see there's some kind of writing here. It sort of says something eight something, some sort of numbers, not too sure. But Joe's pointed out it has a hole in it that runs all the way through the centre, so perhaps it was to be sort of turned round or there was some kind of pipe going in there who knows but there's an old um, drainage sluice there which i don't think is from world war ii but at the bridge joe's just pointed out that it's got a metal grate on it so perhaps this bridge actually controlled the drainage as well back in the day and it's since been replaced by a sluice over there The second hut on site that we looked at was made out of concrete blocks with decorative bricks around the entrance. What it was used for remains a mystery and looking at its crude and sparse interior suggests it wasn't used for much more than a store. It's really collapsing this building, look at that. It's falling down in the corners. Um, and over in the corner, we've got some sort of base which could be for like a generator type thing. Who knows? What do you reckon in here? <laughs> it's interesting how it's always got that, um, the natural lights up there rather than any sort of light fixtures. Um, so essentially just a hole for light. There's no sense of power or any cables come to this building. Um, which gives an indication of its age. And over here we've got these sort of demolished piles of rubble. So I'm guessing some kind of building would have been in here at one point. Now what's left is a mixture of concrete and what looks like actual natural rocks. So perhaps there was just some rocks dumped here. Perhaps it wasn't actually a formal building. Who knows? Joe takes some photos over here where we've got what looks like the base of a much larger structure which would have gone here. 
perhaps this might have been just like a temporary um a temporary shed for like accommodation or something or for like a sort of temporary office type of building um i can't imagine they'd have a concrete building this large for what it is and then we've got some sort of concrete section at this end which does appear to be demolished perhaps there was yeah some sort of shed <laughs> Oh, there we go. Yeah, it must have been some quite a big building. Oh, no.